Hello everyone, today we're going to do an in-depth analysis of what we're going to see in the new episode. We'll talk about new characters, new locations, and events of the second episode, and much more. And let's not hesitate to start with our amazing video. Recently we saw the announcement of the new episode of The Amazing Digital Circus, in which in addition to new locations, commercials, and everything else, we were shown a lot of new characters. I counted eight new characters, and we're about to get started. Many of these characters we have already seen in one of the leaks from Gooseworks. The first one in our video is this blue character right here. Let's give each character a name to help us all navigate. I see that he's structurally similar to Bubble, so let's call him Bub. You can immediately see that this character has appeared in the place where Jax will be spending his time. This is sort of the McDonald's of the digital circus world, and I think he will be there long before Jax gets there. It's probably the administrator of this place, and remember how I said that Jax can't act so outrageous for a long time. Most likely Kane decided to teach him a lesson and sent Jax to this character. Bub, on the other hand, is a normal NPC that Kane realized. I think he will act the same way Jax did with the other characters. Most likely, he will make nasty jokes about the rabbit, mock him in any way possible, or give him a very boring and difficult job. And only after Jax realizes what his mistake was, will he be able to go back, and then this fictional McDonald's and our bub will just disappear. Let's talk about this interesting character. Whether it's a crocodile or a dinosaur is still unclear. But I'm sure it's a dinosaur, in which case it's very easy to name him. Dino, of course. You can also immediately understand that Dino will be a member of the Candy Canyon Kingdom location. And Gooseworks themselves have confirmed that this character will be their favorite in the new episode. I'm sure he'll be the first one we see in Candy Canyon Kingdom. If we can say so, he will be our so-called guide in the new location. Looking at this location, we see a castle. However, on the spoiler where Dino was shown, we can only see a field, mountains, and sky. I think that once our characters get to Candy Kingdom, he will meet them and take them to the castle itself and explain to them what and how it is organized here and who they should listen to. I don't think he will be a villain, just a normal NPC who will appear for a few minutes, and of course his hat makes me excited. Before we move on to the main character of Candy Canyon Kingdom, I want to talk about a very interesting character who can already give us a big secret about the amazing digital circus. We all know what the mannequins in the digital circus tent look like. They are beige in color and generally look like normal mannequins, but in Candy Canyon Kingdom they look very different. You can see that they are blue in color and can go outside of their usual territory. You can see that he's very afraid of something, but I'll talk more about that in the next video. I think everyone is surprised by his color and that's why I have a theory that this is not just a dummy. I would call him the boss of them all. I think he will play one of the key roles in the new episode, unlike all the previous characters. But then again, I don't think he's going to be some kind of villain. Most likely he will be a positive or neutral character just like Dino. Now it's time for our princess. If I had the right, I would call her queen, but unfortunately she hasn't grown up to that level yet. I would call her Prin Peach because of her resemblance to Princess Peach from the Nintendo series. I really like her appearance. She's literally walking candy. Her eyes are candy, her body is cake, but her waffle crown is something I'd like to eat myself. And at first, she seems to be a very kind character, always willing to help. She reminds me a bit of Ragatha, and she's going to be one of the two main characters among the newcomers. But it's not that simple. I think she lives in the castle all the time, and rarely sees the previous two characters. When the characters we already know see her for the first time, I think they will be happy because they will think that now they are going to stay in this wonderful, sweet place. But after a while, the characters will realize that Prin Peach is not just the princess of this place, but she is literally as much artificial intelligence as Kane. I think the Digital Circus is just one of the locations in this amazing game. And just like Candy Canyon Kingdom is the area that our princess controls, and since they are parts of the same whole, the mechanics there are the same. So our characters hope that Prin Peach will be a kind and gentle girl is nothing, and the horrors she can show them are no less than what Kane showed, maybe even more. Now it's time to talk about the biggest villain in Candy Canyon Kingdom. I don't even know how to describe this creature. Even though he looks really disgusting, he's made of chocolate, so let's call him the Choco King. Let's honor our old friend. I think he's going to be the revealed villain of the new episode. It's unlikely that such a creature could bring anything but fear and terror into our character's lives, but agree that it would be very tasty to eat. I think this character will work in the same team as Prin Peach, and just like Gloink's Queen, will be created for a specific task. But I think if Gloink's Queen herself didn't want to do anything bad because she was practically immobile, this guy will be very fast because he's like a snake that can literally slither on the ground. I think he's going to be the main challenge for the characters we already know. 
they may have to destroy him, and then they can eat him as a reward. But it's important to note that judging from the way his eyes are feral, I could say that our characters will have to be as careful as possible because if one of them stumbles, the Choco King will not hesitate to eat them quickly, and unfortunately, some of the characters' lives will be over. It is important to note that we can see that his whole body is made of melted chocolate, which means that the temperature inside him will be quite high, which can also destroy our characters. In general, I can say that it will be much harder for them to deal with him than it was with Gloink's Queen, especially since Kaufma will never come back to them. The creators of the project have officially announced it. We have just seen all the characters of one of the two new locations, and if the name of this kingdom we know exactly what the second location is, still a very big mystery. And about the characters who will live in this mystical house, let's call it that. Now and we'll go speech. I think the main character of this place will be Ali. If you're wondering why I gave her that name, you'll remember the leaked image of her and how much she looks like a classic alien. I'm pretty sure she's owned this house for centuries. Judging by the way she's dressed, I can safely say she died around the 18th, 19th centuries, which means she's been living in this mystical house for at least 125 years. And for some reason, I'm sure she's managed to build a huge number of traps and various puzzles that our characters will have to solve on their way to her. And in general, she looks like a very beautiful and attractive girl. Perhaps in her youth she was from a noble family and some thugs or bandits decided to rob her, and as a result she died at a very young age. Despite the fact that she is a ghost, I somehow think that she will be a positive character, unlike Prin Peach, and all the traps she sets serve only one purpose, to determine who really needs her and who is willing to do anything to meet her. By the way, that scene with Kinger happened after their meeting, not before, but later. And at the moment, only she and Prin Peach are real people, and all the others we told you about are just temporary NPCs. Now here comes the cutest creature I've ever seen. And it's this cute gopher named Gofi, who is our Ally's pet. Unfortunately, the fate of this cute gopher is as tragic as that of its owner. I think he'll make an occasional appearance in a new episode like Bubble, or maybe Ally created him so she wouldn't feel so sad and lonely. But trust me, she will not be lonely at least not because of him. And now we're going to talk about the most mysterious character not only of the Mystic House, but of the whole new episode in general. Tapey, that's his name. And it's because of him that Ali has set so many traps. For a long time, Tapey has wanted to take over the house in order to carry out his evil plans. Since he is only a tape, he cannot move on his own. However, he has another power. He can create various creatures to help him. At the moment, however, Ali is very good at dealing with them herself. But who can stop Tapey from gathering all his powers and creating a very strong monster that can bypass all of Ali's traps and then take over the house? You might wonder how he manages to stay in the house for so long and why Ali doesn't just throw him out. Take a closer look at his eyes. They allow Tapey to make music. And what's wrong with that, you ask? It's because this music isn't what everyone else is listening to. Tapey's music does two things. One, it drives Ali crazy. And two, it's the music that creates new monsters. By the way, remember that fragment with Kinger where he's trying to kill somebody with a shotgun? And for some reason, I have a feeling that it was Tapey who was the toy he was beating. Our trailer starts with the shots the creator showed us a long time ago, namely from the Pomni room, but at the same time we are shown a view from above. And right after that we see a very enthusiastic and happy Kane telling us that the pilot episode of Digital Circus managed to reach its main goal, to collect one viewing. Well, we know that this goal was exceeded 271 million times. And as soon as Pomni asked if that's how it's supposed to work, Kane immediately told her to shut up and promised to show her a lot. Well, of course, I was very surprised by this shot with Kane as a very cute and pretty girl. Then Kane says that Pomni's cute crying face has left a very big mark on the internet. And we are apparently shown various thumbnails that show something so unpleasant that the creators decided to blur these images. Well, what could it be? Remember the other day when we talked about content farm channels, and you might have thought that we were talking about them, but I would like to assure you that we are talking about something completely different, namely various indecent animations or just images from Pomni that can only be viewed from the age of 18. And then Pomni starts to get very amused by all this, and Kane responds in his usual way that it's a consequence of being so popular. And then at the end, he doesn't leave Pomni and us without a prediction that it's only going to get worse. I think this is a reference to Gooseworks and Glitch where our goose acts as Pomni and also doesn't understand why this is happening to a very nice character. Then the really interesting spoilers start. One of them was the new location. Many were sure that in the new episode we will learn more about the lake or the amusement park, but the creators decided to surprise us with something new and showed Candy Canyon Kingdom. Let's talk a bit about this location. 
At first glance, it might seem like there's nothing interesting here, but if you take a closer look at this location, you'll notice that there are at least two of our old characters in this car, namely Jax and Kinger. And I'm sure all the others are there as well, but since they're all lower than these two, we just can't see them. And of course, in the amazing digital circus, things can't be that simple, and instead of a horse, I saw a very strange creature that is obviously not happy with what is happening to him. I won't torture you too long and tell you who it is. Remember one of the leaks from Gooseworks where we were shown this interesting character called the Gummy Elephant? I think the resemblance is obvious. But it also tells us that even the oldest Gooseworks leaks can be not just funny pictures, but real spoilers of events or characters of new episodes. And you'll see that from now on. Then we are shown one of the scenes from the new episode, which happens to take place in this colorful and bright place. But I think everyone has noticed the contrast that is felt from the very first seconds of watching. Outside, everything is bright and sweet, but inside it's more like some kind of escape movie from an old building. And Kinger holding a shotgun makes you think of the horrors our characters will face in Candy Canyon Kingdom. The only thing I still don't understand is what exactly is he doing? Is he trying to hit something or is he just trying to end the life of one of the characters? I was also amused by the reference to McDonald's with Jax in the lead role. We all know that many customers in such establishments can be very rude to the staff, and so Kane could teach Jax a lesson by making him experience all the humiliation he inflicts on the other inhabitants of the digital circus. Very interesting was the fragment with the unfinished project of another new location. This stadium is still under construction, and I'm not even sure if we'll see it in the next episode. And then we just hear Sun wanting to kill Kane. I was shocked at first, but then we were told that Sun was just offended that Moon had two lines in the pilot and Sun had none. So Kane, to save his life, decided to agree and give Sun a few words in the new episode. I wouldn't have paid any attention to this scene at all if it wasn't for the fact that it was a perfect lead-in to one of the most important parts of this trailer. Meet the new characters. Some of them we already saw in one of the old leaks, and to be honest, I'm surprised by the quality of Gooseworks and Glitch's work. We've already seen this weird blue monster, the pink princess, this green creature has also been shown to us. This character was the most mysterious for me, and if everything was clear with the previous ones, then I had problems to find out his identity. And after watching the trailer, I am sure that this character is the same dinosaur cowboy we will meet in Candy Canyon Kingdom. And now it's time to tell you that I've been a bit deceitful lately. Please forgive me, but it had to be done. Remember when I said that the kinger with the shotgun was in the Candy Castle room? They are actually two completely different places, and I just had to keep it a secret until now. But what is this secret house that looks very much like a mystical haunted place? And even the characters in this location are hinting to us that we should be a little creeped out when we find ourselves in this house with our characters. But the cutest character in the new episode is definitely this gopher. I think it's this girl's pet. Would you like a more detailed analysis of this trailer? With all the obscure references? Let me know in the comments. And then Kane again predicts that now a huge crowd of fans will be spiking our old characters with new ones. And once Pomni asks, is that a cry for help? Kane turns into some kind of toy and floats. And then Bubble shows up and asks for support for the new episode. And of course we were shown a little commercial with toys, keychains, plastic figures, and clothes. But I think those who are interested can just go to the official site and see for themselves. And you will not spend much time here. And at the end, we see the sentence, episodes will come out when they are ready and there is already a controversy about the release date of the new episode of The Amazing Digital Circus. If you go to any of the media platforms on the Glitch account, you can see their appeal to us. The Digital Circus is coming. We've been hard at work and will be dropping episodes this year and into next year. Thank you for your patience. We're also hard at work on Murder Drones and will be releasing final episodes soon. Right now we're looking at Digital Circus Episode 2 coming out around May, and that's a long time. Let's discuss how true this information is and if Glitch is really just flirting with us. What if the release of the new episode actually takes place in May 2024? That would be terrible, and here's why. Of course, we will get a very high-quality episode, which I am 100% sure will be much better than the pilot. But just think, it's been about four months since the last episode was released and we still have to wait another two to three months. I think a very large part of those 271 million viewers will just get tired of waiting and stop caring about the amazing digital circus, and in that case, Glitch will be the clear loser. But there is an important point here. If during this period we are warmed up by various spoilers every week and the full trailer is shown around the end of March, then we can safely say that most of the audience will still be interested in this project, but it will not be the same numbers that we saw in the pilot episode. If the new episode comes out in May and gets at least 100 million views, it will be a huge success. 
Well, I and many of you do not want to wait so long, and there is a possibility that these words about the release of the new episode in May were said specifically so that the creators would just fall behind and not ask stupid questions. We can argue with me for a long time, but just try to put yourself in the shoes of Gooseworks or Glitch. Imagine getting thousands of messages every day asking the same question about the release date. Of course, they got tired of it and decided to just stop. I think this version has a right to exist because Glitch are not stupid at all and understand how the audience is organized on YouTube. And if we have already received so many leaks, and now the announcement, then I can safely say that the new episode is now at the stage of completion, and maybe there are just a few things left to be edited, and everything will be ready for release. I will not go back on my words that the ideal date would be the second half of March, because there will be no better time to find a balance between the interest of the audience and the quality of the new episode. What do you think Glitch really wanted to say with this post? I'm looking forward to your answers in the comments, and I'll read each and every one of them with great joy and pleasure. And finally, I'd like to talk about the events of the second episode. I still believe that the episode will start with Pomni's room, and then everything else. I think that first Pomni will come to his senses after the first day in the digital circus, and only then we will be sent to Candy Canyon Kingdom, where we will meet that dinosaur, pink sweet princess, blue mannequin, and this monster. What it is, I still can't figure out. And after we finish with the Sweet Canyon, only then, we will be sent to a mystical haunted house and this tape that already makes my body covered with goosebumps. In the recent so-called trailer of the new episode, we were shown four new locations. Candy Canyon Kingdom, the Spudsies, some kind of stadium, and a mystical house. However, these are not all the new locations that will be shown in the new episode. Let's start our video to learn not only about all the new locations, but also about the secrets and mysteries they hold. And the first location I would like to talk about is the most popular location among viewers, Candy Canyon Kingdom. We only saw a little bit of it, but I can tell you a lot about it. If you look at Dino's picture, you can see that Candy Canyon Kingdom is very big, maybe even several times the size of the digital circus. This means that the creators have something in store for us that we don't even know about. I think many of you have already realized that Candy Canyon Kingdom is not some kind of extension or continuation of the digital circus. If you take a closer look at this moment, you can easily see that at least two of the familiar characters are sitting in this car. I'm talking about Jax and Kinger. Or maybe all the other characters are there and you can see that they were brought there by Gummy Elephant. I think that in order to get to Candy Canyon Kingdom, you have to travel a great distance. And most likely Kane just teleported all of our characters to the beginning of the new location, where they were met by a guide. And the guide in our case will be Dino, because in his background we see only bare terrain, and on the territory of Candy Canyon Kingdom, there is some castle in which lives this interesting and very, very sweet princess. Most likely, Candy Canyon Kingdom will be one of the two locations that will take up most of the time in the new episode. The action that will take place in the new location will not be much different from what we were shown in the pilot episode. Of course, I'm not saying they'll be absolutely identical, but the structure may be very similar. And this picture with this so-called Choco King and another character, but we will talk about him later. Most likely, the Choco King is a reference to the Gloinks Queen, but only in the Candy Canyon Kingdom universe. This means that somewhere in Candy Kingdom, there will be a secret location with one of the bosses. Who will create it is still unknown, but it is believed that the Princess of Candy Canyon Kingdom has the same abilities as Kane in the Digital Circus, which means that she can easily create various tasks that our characters will have to fulfill, this is also supported by the fact that the location of the Chaco King is not shown in any of the pictures. By the way, as I promised, let's talk about the last image from Candy Canyon Kingdom. It shows a blue mannequin with horror and panic on its face. But in this video, we are more interested in the background behind him. I'm really amazed at how delicious everything looks in Candy Kingdom, because even the castle looks like I'd jump on it and eat every last bite. I'm sure Candy Canyon Kingdom will be the very first location shown in the new episode. And if you think that Kane will be involved in its creation in any way, you are sorely mistaken. The Amazing Digital Circus is just one part of a huge set that includes several locations, and each of these locations has main characters. In the Digital Circus, it is Kane, and in Candy Canyon Kingdom, it is the Princess. But of course, they can interact with each other, which will be shown in the second episode. Most likely, we will see that many of the characters will tell our administrator that they are tired of the circus and want something new. And after Kane teleports them to Candy Kingdom, the most interesting events of the first half of the new episode will begin. Our Dino will meet them and tell them how to get to the main location, Candy Canyon Castle. There they will be met by a pink princess. In the previous videos we called her Prin Peach, so today we will call her that. Prin Peach will be happy to greet our heroes and tell them about everything that happens within the walls of this sweet place. 
But remember, as I mentioned before, Choco King, this fat man will be the main villain of Candy Kingdom. Most likely at the moment when our characters are playing, eating, and having fun with Prin Peach, he will appear and disturb their beautiful environment. After that, Prin Peach will say that this was done on purpose. And now our characters must find the answer to the riddle of how to destroy this monster. And gradually we will see how they will solve various puzzles, past tests, and many other things, and in the end they will meet Chocolate King, and at that moment, something terrible will happen between them. Everyone will try to destroy their enemy, and in the background, Prin Peach will be watching them with Kane. And because of all this horror, the rest of the Candy Canyon Kingdom characters will be forced to flee in terror as far away from the scene as possible. The picture of the mannequin actually proves this, but of course our heroes will manage to deal with the Chaco King and get their reward. I think it will be a wonderful dinner, like at the end of the pilot episode, However, instead of the usual food, we will see tons of candy. After their meal, they will go back to the digital circus where they will go to bed. However, things will not go as smoothly as Kane and Prin Peach planned and as usual, Jax will show his worst side and will bully the others again instead of helping them. And this behavior of Jax makes our Kane very tired and he decides to teach our bully a little lesson. The scene at the fast food restaurant called Spudsies shows us just that. Remember the mention of minimum wage. And let's not forget about minimum wage labor! I think that was said for a reason, and to let us know that Jax is clearly going through a rough patch because of his past behavior. I think Spudsies itself is not a punishment, but just a place that Kane created specifically for our bunny. I'm sure the punishment for Jax is that he has to pay for everything now, and in order to make a living in the digital circus, he has to work somewhere. Look how much he hates what he does and Kane has to force him to do it. And then I have to tell you about Spudsies' administrator. This blue monster named Bub was also created by Kane and will disappear once Jax has earned the forgiveness of the other characters. It turns out that our Bub is only a temporary NPC. I'm very sad to hear this news because this character is already one of my favorites of all the newcomers. And his role will be that of an evil manager who is always dissatisfied with his employees' work. But I'm sure that all the scenes with Jax will be shown to us parallel to the main plot and there will be two scenes in total. The first one after the return from Candy Canyon Kingdom, and the second one closer to the end of the second episode. Before we get to the most mysterious location of the new episode, I would like to tell you about another location that we were shown in the trailer. And it's the same stadium that has so many fans of the Digital Circus so excited. Of course, I'm talking about the stadium that will appear not in the second episode, but I think somewhere in the fourth or fifth episode. And I have a hunch that it's going to be the biggest location we've ever seen. And if you think about it, we already saw it in the pilot. I think everybody knows a location like the Void. And at the end of the pilot episode, Kane admitted that this is not the exit from the Digital Circus at all, but just one of his projects that is in development. And most likely it will be replaced by a stadium, because it would be strange if Kane was building two new locations at the same time. And judging by the size of the Void, our stadium will be very, very big. So let's be patient and wait for new episodes to see this location in its final form. Now let's take a look at a very spooky location, Mystic House. We were not told about it directly, but based on the character photos we can understand that this location will definitely appear in the new episode. I already told you that Candy Canyon Kingdom will take up the first half of the second episode, but the second part will be all about this creepy but very interesting house. I already told you that Ghosty is the main mistress of the mystical house, and this is a cute gopher, her favorite pet named Gofi. And the villain of this place is Tapey, and now how our characters got there. The day after they returned from the Candy Canyon Kingdom, the characters rested and regained their strength because Kane warned them that they would soon have to go on another journey, which they would probably not like. And after a few days, we saw Kane wake everyone up and immediately send them to the Mystic House, where they found out that Ghosty and Gofi lived quietly for a long time, taking care of the house, but then Tapey appeared, and his main goal is to take over the Mystic House. And after our characters learned all this, Kane appeared in front of them and told them what to expect from that day on, and to make them aware that Tapey can create monsters and that he is willing to destroy absolutely any character for his goal. And to protect them from these monsters, Ghosty has built many traps and puzzles in the house. And to get out of it, they have to solve all the puzzles and traps that we will see in the second part of the episode. And at the end of this location, we will see the scene with Kinger, where Tapey will be destroyed. I think that will be the end of their adventure in the new location. After that, they will successfully return to the Digital Circus, and Kinger will take his shotgun with him. And of course, I really want to tell you about two more locations that we could theoretically see in the new episode. But even if it happens, it will only be a small fragment. I'm talking about the lake with the yacht and the amusement park. Judging by what we saw in the trailer or in the pilot episode, those locations are completely finished and will be shown to us in the future. 
but whether it will be in the second episode or later is still a mystery to us. Recently, one of the animators of The Amazing Digital Circus showed us some of the cutscenes and so-called behind the scenes, and I was very surprised to see how interesting the new episode was. Let me show you all these scenes and we will analyze and look at each of them together. And the first scene is the very beginning of this trailer. Remember how Pomni is sleeping at first and then Kane brutally wakes up our girl? After that, there was a very interesting conversation between them and just this process of this conversation and showed us one of the animators. That's what I like about such videos, that we can learn the original vision of the author on this or that scene. Is that how that normally works? Shut up! I have so much to show you! <laughs> Your little crying face left quite the little crying mark on the internet. Even here, we can see that in the original version of the room, Pomni looked quite different than in the final scene. At least we don't see the curtains that partially cover Pomni's bed. And also originally, it was supposed that Pomni would not have one big pillow, but several small ones. The trailer also showed a fragment that was an exact copy of a scene from the pilot episode. I have so much to show you! <laughs> Your little- However, while in the trailer, we see a perfect transition between locations. In the original version, the transition was supposed to be a full-fledged teleportation through the so-called wormhole. This scene reminds me very much of Pomni's journey through the void. And of course, I can't help but mention the digital circus area, which just looks disgusting. But I have an assumption that this animator simply did not bother with the scenery and focused more on the movements of the characters. Imagine if our The Amazing Digital Circus looked like Kevin Temmers. But what I'm most interested in is where the digital circus tent went. And the beautiful meadow instead of the lake also fascinates me a lot. I'm not even talking about the completely eco-friendly amusement park. Not a single mechanical part, just beautiful green plants. I think Greta Thunberg would be very happy. I've talked a lot about Kane's eyes in the original, and I have to admit that I still can't remember why they look so creepy. Another interesting fact is that Kane's costume is supposed to be yellow on the inside. Similarly, the scene we were shown after the presentation of the new characters, the sky in the background was supposed to look very dark, but in the end they decided to do it in the usual digital circus style. And did you pay attention to Kane's hat? In the final version, it looks with a red stripe, but in the process of creation, the authors assumed that the stripe will be blue. And to be honest, the final version looks a hundred times better. Then we were shown the funniest scene of the whole trailer. I think you have already guessed that I am talking about the moment when Kane turns into a stuffed animal. I see. But it's not just our administrator that's interesting in this scene. Take a closer look at the digital circus tent. In addition to the main building, you can see some sort of small annex next to it. But for some reason, the creators decided to remove this building completely and put huge entrance doors in its place. Kane himself in his plush version looks very strange in the original version. Our Kevin looks as if he just took a PNG image and added it when creating the 3D animation and layered it on top of the main version of Kane. But luckily, in the process of creating the final version of the animation, plush Kane was slightly modified and now looks quite appropriate and cute the great and powerful artificial pet bubble. What surprised me was that he came right out of Pomni's mouth. Uh, you... How can we support the production of this cool new show? Great question, Pomni. All merch sales go right back into funding the show and allow us to do bigger and crazier things. Wowee, I've become a pen if it meant getting sold to fund more wacky. And in the original scene, he looks too rough, if I may say so. Just compare the original and the final version. In the original version, bubble represents some blue substance, while in the final version, bubble looks like a real soap bubble. Look how beautifully his body shimmers in the sunlight. And then we see Kane. Nothing out of the ordinary happens, but it's important to note that I'm once again disturbed by his eyes. Of course they are not as creepy as before, but now they both have blue circles around them, even though we all know that one of Kane's eyes is green. I think this is just a later version of the trailer where a lot of details have been finalized. Not without commercials these days. And it's also in the trailer. And Kevin Temmer was responsible for that as well. Let's compare the posters from the very beginning of the trailer and the posters from the final version of the trailer. First of all, the bubble poster. Video that in the original version of the poster itself is more dim and our bubble has a large size. And I do not understand why the developers decided to reduce it in the final version. In my opinion, the reduced version of the bubble looks much worse than originally intended whereas the Pomni poster did a much better job and all they did was turn our fool around a bit. I'm not even talking about the plush Canes commercial. Now let's talk a little bit about Jax. Based on the previous behind the scenes, I realized that Kevin Temmer is responsible for the most complex animations on this character, and this shot was no exception. But I'm very interested to know what this mysterious fast food restaurant is. 
And using Jax as an example, it is very easy to explain the reason for such a long absence of a new episode. Just compare the original footage and the final version. Of course, such an improvement takes a lot of time and effort. Now let's take a look at some very funny, unfortunate shots that were permanently removed from the trailer of the new episode. And the first scene will be our introduction to the trailer. I can't imagine what happened to Pomni's face, but it's much more interesting to look at Kane's face. Sometimes I get the feeling that the creators are doing this on purpose to amuse us in the future. Kane's return from plush to normal is also accompanied by a weird scene where Kane looks a lot like a robot and it's already very creepy. After watching this video, I think that Kane is definitely a man. Especially after seeing how sensual he dances, I had my doubts. And now we're back to the scene of the Pomni keychain poster. Bubble pin! <laughs> and this Pomni pin! And we can't forget about this! <laughs> We were shown two initial versions, which are very different from the final version. I think there were many more scenes like this, because what we are shown is just the tip of the iceberg of the whole process of creating a digital circus. Now let's talk about the process of creating 3D animation. Let's take a look at the scene in which Pomni, Kane, and Bubble participated. We think that it is not difficult to create such an animation, but just look at how much effort it takes to get Pomni to open his mouth correctly. On top of that, you have to animate the head and body movements correctly, and Bubble has to come out of Pomni's mouth. And then there's the endless attempts to find the best shot. You as a viewer do not know this moment, but I as a content creator can safely say that sometimes for 2-3 seconds of video can take 20 attempts and about 30 minutes. Let me remind you of another fragment from the trailer of the new episode. That how that normally works? Shut up! I have so much to show you! <laughs> In the process of creating this scene, I noticed how detailed the writers are about even small details, like hand movements. In fact, it is such nuances that distinguish a really high quality and successful project from the various garbage created in one day. Well, besides the head, a very important aspect of Kane's movements is the movement of his head. And it seems that even the smallest details, such as the contour of the gum, are not too important. But our creators try to bring even such things to perfection. And to be honest, they do it very well. Well, the final scene itself was also brought to the best condition. Well, that's the end of our huge analysis of the new episode trailer. I wish you success and good luck and see you soon in new videos that appear every two days.